Hello children, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan from Delhi University and in this session I will discuss about pituitary gland. In the previous session, we dis discuss about distribution of various endocrine glands in our body. Also, we discussed about pituitary gland being the master gland and under hypothalamus. Coming to the detail of pituitary gland, the pituitary gland is also called hypophysis. It has three lobes, the anterior lobe, the posterior lobe, the intermediate lobe. The anterior lobe is also known as pars distalis or adenohypophysis. The posterior lobe can also be called neurohypophysis or neural lobe and intermediate lobe is called intermediate lobe. The neural lobe is directly connected to the hypothalamus or you can say it is extension of hypothalamus whereas the anterior lobe and the intermediate lobe are indirectly connected to the hypothalamus they have no direct connection also one more fact is that in human beings the anterior lobe and intermediate lobe are merged so pars distalis will do the function of anterior lobe as well as intermediate lobe whereas in lower mammals you do find all the three lobes in a distinct manner. I now give you details of anterior lobe which is also known as adenohypophysis. Adenohypophysis is source of six important hormones which are synthesized and secreted by anterior lobe itself. That means inside the anterior lobe you have six different types of cells producing six different types of hormones. Of course, the message comes from hypothalamus in the form of releasing factors or in case of prolactin in the form of inhibitory factor. The hormones if I try to name them FSH the follicle stimulating hormone. It will act on the gonads. It will stimulate follicles of the gonads testis or the ovary. In case of ovary, it will stimulate ovarian follicles. In case of testis, it will stimulate seminiferous tubules. When we say stimulating hormone, follicle stimulating hormone acting on follicle, we mean it will cause maturation of the follicle. Why we need maturation of the follicle? So, we can convert germ cell into sperm or ova or in the form of gamete. So, in case of female, when follicle is stimulated, the germ cell, the female germ cell will produce female gamete, ova. In case of men, when FSH will stimulate seminiferous tubule, the tubule is stimulated, matures and the male germ cell will produce male gamete, the sperm. So, that is the functioning of FSH. The next important hormone coming out from anterior pituitary is LH, luteinizing hormone. It causes luteinization in female. Luteinization is another word for ovulation. So, LH is ovulating hormone, but in men there is no ovulation. So, it is not reasonable to call it LH or luteinizing hormone in case of men. So, in men the same hormone is called ICSH, interstitial cell stimulating hormone because in case of men it is acting on interstitial cells which in turn will produce male hormone. Third hormone from anterior pituitary is TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone which will act on thyroid and will make thyroid secreting thyroid hormones. The fourth one to name is ACTH, adenocorticotrophic hormone. This hormone from anterior pituitary will act on adrenal cortex, not on adrenal medulla. 
The adrenal has outer cortex, inner medulla. The medulla is part of central nervous system. The cortex is part of endocrine system. So, ACTH will act on cortex and that is why it is called adrenocortico. Cortex means corticotrophic hormone. Coming to the next one, the growth hormone or STH, somatotrophic hormone. As the name indicates, it acts on each and every somatic cell in our body and hence helps in the growth of the body and hence it is also called growth hormone. This growth hormone also comes out from anterior pituitary. For these five hormones, FSH, LH or ICSH, TSH, ACTH and STH or growth hormone, we have releasing factors in the hypothalamus. Coming to the last one, prolactin. For this, we have inhibitory factor in the hypothalamus and it is secreted only when our body has particular physiological situation like pregnancy and lactation. But in any case, prolactin is the sixth hormone coming out from anterior pituitary. Neurohypophysis, which is a posterior pituitary, a neural lobe. Children, please remember that neural lobe or neurohypophysis has no cellular structure inside because hormones are not synthesized and released from neural lobe directly. Why? Because secretion and production is taking place in the hypothalamus by neurosecretory cells. Hormones of neural lobe which are namely oxytocin and vasopressin are secreted in the hypothalamus by neurosecretory nuclei, neurosecretory cells and then they are transported down to the neural lobe through axons and they are stored in the neural lobe. In other words, neural lobe is a storing organ, a reservoir, it is not the producing organ. So, hormones of neural lobe are now stored. Another thing which you must remember in this case that hormone can be discharged to the blood. Blood will collect it because the gland does not have a duct, pituitary does not have a duct. So, blood which is supplying the neural lobe will collect these hormones and will take it to the different parts of the body and this hormone will finally act on the site for which it is specific or on the tissue which is target tissue for these hormones. Now little more about the hormone. Vasopressin which is also known as ADH, antidiuretic hormone. It retains water in our body. It is also called vasopressin because this hormone also has pressure effect on our blood vessels, hence is responsible for correct blood pressure in our body. Oxytocin is the hormone which will cause milk ejection if it is a lactation time and will cause downward contraction of uterus if it is the delivery time. So, both the hormones are important and both the hormones are secreted in the hypothalamus, transported and both are the hormones which are stored in the neural lobe and will be discharged, will be collected through blood if and when our body requires them. So, children I am sure you have understood the difference between anterior lobe and posterior lobe. Anterior lobe hormones are synthesized within the anterior lobe whereas posterior lobe hormones are synthesized in the hypothalamus and only stored in the neural lobe. The intermediate lobe secretes only one hormone. The cells for secretion of hormones are present in the intermediate lobe and the hormone secreted is MSH, the melanocyte stimulating hormone. Coming to the details of all the hormones, the TSH from anterior pituitary the thyroid stimulating hormone which will act on thyroid and will make thyroid to produce thyroid hormones namely T3, T4 and calcitonin. T3 is 
triiodothyronine and T4 is thyroxin which looks after BMR the basal metabolic rate. So, these three hormones are produced by thyroid. In fact, T3 is the mother substance for T4. Coming to the adrenal gland, you remember children ACTH the adrenocorticotrophic hormone which was released from anterior pituitary acted on adrenal cortex and made adrenal cortex to release hormones in the form of mineralocorticoids, glucocorticoids and good example of mineralocorticoid is aldosterone which looks after sodium in your body and good example of glucocorticoid is cortisone which looks after glucose metabolism in the body. Please do not confuse cortisol with insulin. Insulin is also looking after glucose. How? Shifting glucose from blood to cell. Once glucose has reached the cell, the metabolism of this glucose is under control of cortisol or cortisol. Coming to parathyroids, parathyroid is acted upon by TSH itself. TSH thyroid stimulating hormone which is coming out from anterior pituitary will stimulate thyroid also will stimulate parathyroid also. Parathyroid will secrete in turn the hormone called parathormone PTH. It looks after calcium and phosphate metabolism in our body. Islet of Langerhans which is endocrine part of pancreas will release two hormones insulin and glucagon. Insulin as children you know will shift glucose from blood to cell. What glucagon is doing here? Glucagon works on the reverse gear. Suppose you have not eaten food for a long time and you are short of glucose in your blood then glucagon will bring glucose from cell to blood. Both the situations are important and they work on reverse gear. Coming to gonads, the important hormone from ovary, they are two in number estrogen and progesterone which make female to look like a female. An important hormone from testis is a male hormone called testosterone which is responsible for masculine features in the man. Placenta is a temporary endocrine gland in our body, pleasant only during pregnancy. It releases a hormone called HCG, human chorionic goidotrophic hormone. It looks after pregnancy for second and third trimester and when placenta starts deteriorating as it has fixed lifespan of 6 months, then this hormone is not available, HCG is not available, hence pregnancy cannot be looked after and hence the delivery or parturition or coming out of fetus will take place. So, placenta is important in giving out hormone HCG and fixed life span of placenta is important for the delivery of the fetus. So, in this session we have discussed about pituitary gland, also about three lobes of pituitary, 6 plus 2 plus 1 that is 9 hormones coming out from pituitary, the control of pituitary by hypothalamus in relation to anterior pituitary and also in relation to posterior pituitary and also the hormones of pituitary acting on different endocrine glands making different endocrine glands releasing so many different hormones which are taking care of our body in different ways. With this we come to the end of this session. Thank you. Mm -hmm.